Hello. So I've had a few people asking in the comments on my Harry Potter videos on how to get the first three games working on modern computers. So this video is going to assume that you have the game on CD already or that you've already installed the game. But when you try and play the game, it comes up with this weird message about admin rights or whatever. And then the game just doesn't play, even if you have the CD in the disk drive. So the reason that these games no longer work is that the DRM software they usually use to check that you have the disk when you launch the game is no longer supported by Windows as it's a bit of a security risk. So the game just never gets past that and you can't play it. So to get the game working, you need to find an exe file of the game that will just bypass the disk check and let you play. So I'm going to be doing this for the Chamber of Secrets, but the method is the same for all three games. So on the right here, I have the EA Games folder, which is where I have all my games installed. And on the left here, I have the no disk check exe file, just called game.exe. So you're going to want to open the game folder of the game you want to do it for. So I'm going to open Chamber of Secrets, then open System, and then in System you can see there's already a game.exe file. So grab the new file, move it in, replace the current game.exe file, and that's it. And then you can just run the game from this exe file in the folder here. So if I was you, I'd make a shortcut and put it on your desktop or wherever you want to play the game from. If you're still struggling to get the games running after this, you might want to run them in compatibility mode. So if you go to the exe file, in this case here, I've just got the Prisoner of Azkaban one. You go right click, properties, compatibility, compatibility mode, then you tick run this program in compatibility mode four, and then select Windows XP Service Pack 3, click apply. OK, and then the game should run. OK, so now that we've got the proper exe file in, let's have a go at playing the game. OK, so when you get to this point, it means that it's working. So let's go new game. OK, so it looks like the game's working now. However, the resolution is pretty low and there are some weird graphical bugs, such as these weird filled out trees here in this cutscene. And Harry's got this weird filled in glasses bug, but these should be pretty easy to fix. OK, so we're going to change a few things. The resolution, the field of view, the frame rate and some other graphic settings. So if you go to your main documents folder, after you've launched the game, it will have created a folder in your documents folder, which is either Harry Potter for the first game, Harry Potter 2 for the second game or Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban for the third game. So again, I'm going to be doing it for the Chamber of Secrets. First of all, you want to go into the folder and access the game.ini file to which you go right click and edit and it will bring it up in Notepad. Note that for the first Harry Potter, it's actually called hp.ini, but you do it in the same way. For the third game, it's hppoa. To change the resolution, you want to search for full screen viewport X and Y, which will be under this heading here. So you want to change the X value to the width for the resolution. So I'm going 1920 and then the Y will be 1080. You also want to make sure that the color bits is 32. For Prisoner of Azkaban, after you've changed the full screen resolution, you can also change it for menu viewport X and Y, to which you'll do the same values as you've done up above. If you want to go higher than 1080, I'm not 100% sure how well it works, so you'll probably want to Google that yourself. Next thing you might want to change is the frame rate. So just slightly further down from the resolution settings, you'll find min desired frame rate, which you can change from 30 to 60. For Prisoner of Azkaban, as well as changing the min desired frame rate to 60, you'll also want to change the one just below min reinstate detail frame rate to 60 as well. And the last thing you want to change in the game.ini file is some of the other graphic settings. If you search for use pre-cache, so you're looking for use pre-cache under this subheading here, not this one, not the one under AL audio, but it's this one here under D3, D, D, DRV, whatever that is. And you want to change use pre-cache to false. And this should get rid of those trees that are blocked in and Harry's glasses that are blocked in as well. You'll also want to do this same graphics change for the first game. Although personally, I didn't notice too many visual bugs, just a couple. Right, after you're done, you want to save the game.ini file and close it. Lastly, before you play, you'll also want to change the field of view, which is found in user.ini, and this is the same in all three games. So the reason you need to change the field of view is that now that we've changed the aspect ratio, the field of view will be wrong, so we need to edit that as well. Here you want to search for desired FOV and default FOV under engine player porn subheading. So they should both be set to 90 by default. If you're choosing a 1080p display like I am, you'll want to change it to 106.26 
for both desired FOV and default FOV. If you're choosing a different resolution, you'll probably want to look it up yourself of how to do that, as again, I'm not sure. And again, save after you're done. So now if we load up the game, we'll see it's in stunning 1080p if that's what you've chosen. The only thing to note is that some of the UI elements might be a bit stretched, so it's up to you if you change the resolution. For the third game, I also had a few issues that sort of broke the game as well. For example, there was a challenge near the beginning where an imp was frozen and wouldn't move, and some portraits also wouldn't open after you gave them the password. To solve these, if you go into the Prisoner of Azkaban folder in your documents folder, open hppoa.ini, and under engine.engine, .engine, you'll see the first three lines, render device d3 blah blah blah, and the third line has a semicolon, render device opengl blah 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 blah. To make the imp move and change these things, you'll want to add a semicolon in front of the top option, and remove the semicolon in front of the third option, and this fixed it for me. However, I did find throughout the game, there was also moments where some of the graphics did look a bit funny, and occasionally it would crash, so I kind of had to keep flicking between which one of these had a semicolon and which one didn't, but I did manage to play through the whole game, so it did work. If you have any more questions, leave a comment, although I'm not an expert, so I don't know if I'll be able to help, but good luck to you if you have the game. They're all good, obviously. Chamber of Secrets is the best one. If you haven't checked out my sort of nostalgia reviews that I've done of them, feel free to check them out. That would be very nice of you, and have a good day and enjoy the games. Laters!